Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on our 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser. In this video, we're going to continue assembling the cylinder head. We're going to get the cams shimmed. That means we're going to get the buckets on, the shims, the cams, measure all the clearances, and then swap shims all around until we get it all right. And I'm going to show you what that process looks like. Now we're taking our old cam caps one by one. We're pulling them off of this uh, piece of cardboard where we had them organized and we're cleaning them. We're cleaning the threads on the bolts. We're cleaning all the surfaces because they've been sitting here for a couple of years now, getting all the dust off of them and uh, getting them as clean as possible. None of them have a lot of gunk or anything on them. Just wiping them down real good, like so. Getting all the matting surfaces clean. Yep. Nice and clean, no residue, no dust. And we're almost done getting the cylinder head back together. This has been sitting like this for a while. We've got some Lucas uh, oil assembly lube. We've got everything cleaned up. I'm gonna put some assembly lube on all of these bearing surfaces. I just like to use my finger. You can put gloves on if you don't wanna get dirty. Come on, you wanna do those, man? Yep, you got them. Feels like aloe vera. Like what? Aloe vera. Aloe vera. Yeah. So we're just gonna make sure they're all nice and coated. You gotta remember these cams, right? These cams, that's the uh, section that rides on this little bearing inset on your cylinder head. So it's metal on metal. You wanna make sure you've got everything there greased up good. And assembly lube is really good. I can't tell from the photo, but um, it is really nice and sticky, so it's not like oil to where it's going to run off. Uh, I really like the Lucas Assembly Lube. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to buy it. Your local auto parts store should have it as well, but you can get it on Amazon. You also want to put Assembly Lube on the surfaces on your cam as well, and on the surfaces of your cam caps. Cam caps back on. We're just gonna set them into place, and when you do put them on, make sure the arrow, let me show you, that arrow is facing towards the front of the motor, which is this side. Yep, you wanna double check all the arrows, make sure they're all facing the front. Yeah, they are. All right, now we're gonna put the uh, screws in one by one. Hang on, before you put them in, yep, take it out. One more time, we're gonna clean the threads, so grab your towel there. They should already be clean, but they've been sitting for a while. So we're going to clean the threads. And one more thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, before we uh, put these on, we grabbed our uh, air nozzle from our compressor. And uh, you want to blow out all of those holes just in case there's any crud or anything stuck in there. You don't want the threads to get stuck on anything that, um, you know, dirt and stuff that might be in those holes. So blow them all out. Make sure they're clean. Now we're gonna hand tighten all of these one by one. Make sure the left and the right side are evenly tightened so the cam cap is not sitting angled this way or angled this way. Now that we've got all of them snug, we're gonna use our torque wrench set to 12 foot pounds and get all of them torqued down. Keep going. There you go, perfect. All right. Good job, man. Keep going, you're fine. Sometimes they slip a little like that. Now that that's torqued down, we wanna check our valve clearance. Uh, that's the clearance between the bottom of the cam lobe where the pointed piece is pointing upwards and the uh, shim that sits on top of the valve bucket. So this is the shim here, if you remember. And each of the shims has a different thickness. We put them back where they came from, but with the new valves that we put in, who knows if they're different or not. More than likely, a couple of them are gonna be off. If we use the same old valves and put all the old valves in the same spot, then in that case, you probably wouldn't have any sort of uh, changes needed unless it was just due to wear and tear. In order to do that, we wanna use our feeler gauges. Specs for the 1FZ head, if I remember correctly, are between 0.15 and 0.25 millimeters so you want to find the feeler gauge that's somewhere around there and we're going to aim for the middle of that so 0 0.2 0 0.2 millimeters 
Let's grab our point two. You're gonna take your feeler gauge and essentially put it in between the uh, cam lobe and the top of the bucket and check every single one. You're gonna check this one, this one, and then turn your cam to where these are pointing up. Check these two and these two and so on and so on. We're gonna check all of them and uh, you wanna keep using different feeler gauges until one goes in, but it gives you just a little bit of tension and write that down and then we'll come back and make some adjustments got all my measurements written down and everything's within spec i've got two of them that are at 0.25 it's actually a little less than 0.25 because i really had to shove the gauge in there i think they're more around 0.23 and the uh, rest of them are 0.18 0 0.20 so we're good um i'm gonna leave all of those no need for adjustments or swapping of the shims. Now we're going to work on the exhaust side. We've got our exhaust cam all cleaned up, degreased, and blew it out with some compressed air. Now before we do any of that, we took all of our cam caps off. We're going to blow out all of these holes with compressed air. And then we're going to get some assembly lube. Again, put on all of those. And on the bottom of all of the cam caps, you can zoom in. Now we're going to put this on. You see how I did there? And what you want to do is essentially get that lined up, get the gears in mesh, and roll this down, and make sure they stay in mesh. Now we're going to torque those down to 12 foot-pounds. So the exhaust side is supposed to be around 0.3 millimeters of clearance, and that one's a little too tight. These 3.5s are fine. These are okay. This 3.8, this 4.0, this 3.8, and this 4.0, they're... Uh, they're a little loose, especially the two four O's. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna check and see what shims are on these two and probably swap it out right here and maybe right here with one of those. And we'll see if we can tighten those clearances up on the loose ones and loosen them up on these tight ones. So we've got that exhaust cam off. Now this one is the tightest fitting. That means the shim is probably maybe the thickest. And then this 0 0.40 and this 0 0.40 are very uh, loose. So those are probably thinner shims, hopefully. Now, what we're gonna do is pull this one out and pull this one out, measure the thicknesses. And if what we think is right, we're gonna swap them. You gotta use one of these big old magnet thingies. All right, and let's get this guy off. There you go, good job. That's fine. I pulled the whole bucket off. What? What do you want me to do? We'll, we'll use a little pick uh, right there. And we'll get the little shim that's on top of it off. Yep, there's a little gap right there. There you go. Now we're going to pull that one off. And let's get that shim out too. So now we got both of them out. Are we going to swap them right away? Nope. We're going to measure them first. What are we going to measure them with? Mm, this one. Yeah, that thing. What's it called? Caliper. Caliper. That's right. So with the calipers, you want to leave them all the way shut. Right? And while it's shut, turn it on. All right. Set it to millimeters. This millimeters? Mm-hmm. Right? What are the measures? Zero it out. Zero it out, so it's at 0 0.02. There you go, perfect. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the thickness of this shim and the thickness of that shim. Those shims come in all different sizes so that you can adjust the valve clearance. Like this? Yep. Put it further in, put it further in. Yeah, put it all the way in, there you go, perfect. So you got a nice flat surface. So you don't want to pull here. What you want to do is, yeah, push these two jaws together. You don't want to pull on this, because that'll cause a wrong measurement. So what's your measurement? 2.92. All right, go ahead and write it down right here. All right, let's put that one away, and now we're going to measure this one. Is it? That would make sense, because that's the one that was... Remember, don't pull here. 
You gotta push here. Don't pull on that. All right. 2.99. 2.99. All right. Let's write that measurement down. Perfect. 2.99 what? Millimeters? Yeah. Okay. You ready for some math? Yeah. Okay. So that's 2.92 millimeters. Yep. This one's 2.99 millimeters. Yep. The clearance on this one was only 0.23 millimeters. Okay. That was the gap between the bottom of the cam and the shim. Millimeters or inches? In millimeters. Okay. The clearance on this one was 0 0.40 millimeters. Yeah. So if we swap this shim with this shim, goes over here, where do you think those clearances will end up? Because math is our friend. We don't want to just swap all these. What? 0.32. So this is 0.92, right? Yeah. What's the difference between 0.92 and 0.99? 7. 0 0.07. 0 0.07. So if you take this, subtract 0 0.07, where does it put you? 0.33. All right, go ahead and write it down. You think it's going to be... Well, you don't have to cross it all out. We want to see what we had before. Uh -oh. 0.33. There you go. All right. And the same goes in reverse, right? So the difference was 0 0.07. So what happens if we add 0 0.07? 0 0.32. Yep, and that'll put it just about perfect. All right, so let's swap those two. So we're gonna put that shim in that bucket. And we're gonna put that shim in that bucket. Yeah, if it's angled, just take it out and try again. Put a little pick under it. There you go. Yeah, put it in evenly. It's a very tight fit. You're in? Good? All right. So that's those two. What are our next two that are a little off? This one's really loose, right? Mm hmm And one of these two, we can maybe pull to see if we can get that one closer. Okay. All right, so let's pull that one out. So it's not the last set of valves, it's the next to last, and it's the one on the... Yep, we got it. All right, we got those two out. Let's measure those shims. Point nine two. Okay, go ahead and write it down. Where? Right there. Measure the other shim. Remember, don't pull on this. Just make sure the jaws are tight. Point nine four. Okay. So we got point nine five and point nine two. They're only point oh three different. So we're gonna pull this one as well. It's right there. I'm gonna pull that shim and measure that too. All right, we're gonna measure that one. 3.01, all right, so go ahead and put that here. Let's write it down. All right, that's good. So let's try to see what the math looks like if we swap this one with this one. Go ahead and put that shim here. So that puts us to where everything is close enough. Now, let's go ahead and start on here, Aiden, and we'll put them back one by one. Good job. All right. They're snug fit, so just wiggle them around. And you gotta make sure the angle is right, too. How snug is snug? There you go. Good job. Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna put the exhaust cam back on. All right, so we rotated the intake cam to get that dot right there. We're going to line those two up. Are they? Yep. Good job. I'm going to keep the mesh on the gears and rotate it over. All right. Good job. You got it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why good. doesn't it look on? It looks on. It is? Yeah. 
You see these cam lobes are pointing down? Yeah. And that's why, because those are pointing down, uh, so oh, it's, it's pushing, pushing it up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll start on that side. Nope. Yep, not this side. I'm going to start over there. Make sure the arrow's pointing the right way, too. Arrow is pointing to the front of the car this way. Well, let's get the screws on. We're going to torque everything back down to 12 foot pounds. Now remember, don't tighten a single cam cap and then go to the next one. You're always going to run the risk of cracking your camshaft or causing other problems. So gently tighten them down one at a time and don't make them tight. Just put a couple turns on each bolt as you go. And that way you evenly spread the force on the cam caps as you go. All right, at this point, we are done with the majority of what we can do on the cylinder head. All of that's finished, and we're going to throw an old pillowcase over it so dust doesn't get in there, just uh, to cover it while we work. Now we're going to move on to the short block. It's uh, stripped down as far as anything that bolts to it, but obviously the pistons and the crank and the bearings and everything are still in there. This is an old 2JZ um, piston. And it's, it's interesting to see the size difference. You know, this is from a three liter inline six, this is a four and a half liter inline six. Uh, everybody calls the one FC the big brother to the two JZ. You can tell how much bigger it is. Thanks for watching and following along. Hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful or at least entertaining for you. In the meantime, I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one.